About a month ago, I unboxed and reviewed the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 12.5 version. That's the one with the Core M3 processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabyte SSD. It quickly became my go-to thin and light laptop when I'm on the go. I really do like it. Well, I'm very excited to bring to you today Xiaomi's new one, the 13.3 version that has the Core i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of SSD storage, and a dedicated NVIDIA GPU. Hi, my name's Andrew, and this is the review of the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 13.3. Let's find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. If you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 12.5. That's the Core M3 version. Well, we have its bigger brother in-house right now, and let's take a look. Let's find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. What you get is more RAM, more storage, and a dedicated NVIDIA GPU. And a higher price tag. What you get under the hood is the Intel Core i5 Skylake processor, it's a 6200U variant, Intel HD Graphics 520, the NVIDIA GeForce 940MX GPU, 8GB of RAM, and 256 gigs of SSD storage. It weighs 2.74 pounds, is only 0.58 inches thick. It's thin and light, very elegant looking, and has a premium build in its all aluminum exterior. And one look at it, you know they're targeting Apple's MacBook Air and MacBook lines. I ordered my unit from banggood.com. I will put the link below to where you can find out more information and where you can purchase it. It took about a couple of weeks to come all the way from Singapore through Hong Kong and then into the United States. Opening the box, you're greeted by a very MacBook-esque packaging, a cue they've taken from Apple in Cupertino. Opening the box, you're greeted by the Mi Notebook Air itself, along with some documentation. Unfortunately, just like the 12.5 inch version, the documentation is all in Chinese. Not much use for me. And here you have the power supply. It charges the unit to 50% in about 30 minutes. It also uses USB Type-C, just like the 12.5 inch version. Overall, the packaging is really first rate and really is elegant looking. Good job, Xiaomi. It's good to see that this has an HDMI port where you can connect to a monitor. It has a USB 3.0 to connect to peripherals and the like, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Moving to the other side, you get a second USB 3.0 port, unlike the 12.5 inch version. And here you have your USB Type-C. That's where you'll charge the device. And you have a microphone. On the bottom of the device, you have a vent for cooling because since this is a Core i5, there are two fans in the device and there are two speakers. This supports Dolby Audio Premium and AKG. We'll talk more about the sound later in the video. And just like its 12.5 inch sibling, you can install a second SSD drive. It's an M2 SATA slot and it's always nice to be able to expand. As far as the display is concerned, we really liked it. What you get is a 13.3 inch IPS display. It's an OGS display, meaning it's a one glass display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. It gets bright at 300 nits and it has pretty good color representation and good color accuracy. This is one of the better full HD panels I've seen in a long time. I really am impressed with it. Although I would have liked to have seen a touchscreen and a higher res display. But I like the fact that there's only an 80.5% screen to body ratio because it's using the edge to edge glass protection as you see here. We were impressed with the keyboard on the 12.5 inch version and we were even more impressed on the 13.3 inch version. It's got 1.3 millimeters of key travel. It has a very bright backlight, but it has only one setting as far as backlighting is concerned. But it was overall a very good typing experience. This is one of my favorite keyboards on an ultra portable right now. As far as the trackpad is concerned, we were equally impressed. Just like the 12.5 inch version, it was nicely sized. It was a nice smooth glass surface. It was responsive. Two finger scrolling was a pleasure and Windows 10 gestures work like a charm. It is quite evident that the Synaptic drivers were well tuned to this device. 
As far as the sound is concerned, again, it uses the AKG and Dolby Premium Audio. Let's take a look and a listen at our latest video to see how the sound is on this device. Apple released the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus a couple of weeks ago, and I've been using the 7 Plus ever since. But I didn't want to release my video right away. I wanted to wait till the dust settles, and I wanted to wait till the hype died down. Hi, my name's Andrew from AMD Tech, and this is our review of the iPhone 7 Plus from Apple. Let's find out if it lives up to its high price tag. Let's find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. Sometimes it's better to wait till all the hoopla and hype dies. As far as sound is concerned, these are some of the best sounding speakers in an ultra portable that I've heard in a long time. It's as good or maybe even better than its 12.5 inch sibling. As far as the webcam is concerned, it was okay. It had a one megapixel front facing webcam. It's a 1280 by 720 video. Didn't do well in low light situations. As far as performance is concerned, here's how it did on the Geekbench 4.0 test. On the multi-core score, it did a 5817, pretty good. The built-in Intel HD Graphics 520 did a 15,425 on the API score. But where it really shines is its dedicated NVIDIA GPU, which did a 27,464 on the API score. That's why this queue can do some gaming on this laptop. I will be doing a separate video on gaming and thermals coming very soon. The Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 13.3 uses a Samsung PCIe SSD. And because it uses a PCIe SSD, it did do very well on the reads. It did a 1534 on the read and a somewhat pedestrian 308 on the right. I was a little surprised on the write scores, but overall, very fast SSD. It uses Bluetooth 4.0 and has Intel dual band wireless AC. Overall, very good wireless reception. As far as the Octane 2.0 score, it did a 26,895. Overall, good scores, better than the M3 version. As far as the battery life is concerned, here's the deal. When it was idle, without wireless LAN on, with minimum brightness, it did 9 hours and 21 minutes. Wi-Fi surfing with the Edge browser did 7 hours and 2 minutes. Watching a movie, H.264 at 1080p, 7 hours and 12 minutes, and under heavy load, it did a little over 3 hours. Overall, battery life was good. So overall, is the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 13.3 a buy or a don't buy? Is it worth the premium you're paying over the 12.5 inch version? And I'm gonna have to say it's a definite buy. I like it's bright full HD display. It's got good speakers, decent battery life, fast SSD read speeds, that extra SATA M2 slot to expand storage, full size HDMI, two full size USB ports, and a great keyboard and trackpad to boot. But here's what I don't like about the device. First, it doesn't have a touchscreen. It's only a 1080p display. I was hoping they would go with a higher 2K or maybe even a 4K display. It has only one level of backlighting on the keyboard, although I did like the keyboard very much. It doesn't have an SD or micro SD card slot. It had a subpar webcam in low light situations that didn't perform well, and it was expensive outside of China and it comes with a Chinese version of Windows, but I was able to convert it to English without any problem and without any need for any additional keys by using the Windows Media Creation tool. It's been working fine on this and the 12.5 inch version. It also runs a little hot under heavy load and when you do some gaming, I will be doing a separate gaming video along with the thermals coming very soon. But despite those few negatives, this is a definite buy and that's why I'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10. So what do you think about the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 13.3? Is it something you're interested in? Are you thinking about getting it? Do you already have it? Do you think its price is too expensive outside of China where the retailers have tagged on a few extra dollars because of its rarity at this point? It's not so readily available. I have to say, I think it is a little bit overpriced, but I really do like it. I love the build quality. It's very premium looking. I love the fact that it really does look and maybe even in some cases even better than a MacBook Air or MacBook. But I'm curious to know, so leave a comment in the comment section below. Is this something you're thinking about picking up? And I'm also thinking about doing a head-to-head -head comparison between the 12.5 Core M3 version versus its bigger brother. 
And I'm also doing a head-to-head -head showdown between the 13.3 inch version and the Surface Book. Both have dedicated NVIDIA GPUs, but both go about it in a different way. One has a touchscreen, obviously, and the other one doesn't. One has pen support and the other one doesn't. Either way, stay tuned, that is coming very soon. Also coming very soon is the very special unboxing and review of the Razer Blade Stealth. That's a 12.5 inch Ultrabook from the gaming OEM. That's Razer and a little bit unusual in the sense that this is not so much a gaming machine unless you attach the Razer Core. We'll talk more about that in the review coming very soon. But what I do like about it is it's got a nice design, a nice departure from the boring OEMs that we've been seeing, the boring designs we've been seeing from these OEMs, a little color to spice things up. I love the Chroma keyboard, the fact that it has multicolored uh, lighting, backlighting on it. I really am looking forward to unboxing it and giving it its full treatment as we normally do here at AMD Tech. So stay tuned for that. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device out there you think I should review. I will do my best to try to make that happen. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.